Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Boozer, and I'm happy to welcome you to today's CUGC Connect with Liquidware. We're going to be talking about app layering and profile management, uh, working together seamlessly. And uh, presenting that for us today is Jason Smith, who is the VP of Product Marketing at Liquidware. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, you can uh, catch him on Twitter. Actually, I think you can't see my screen. Jason, can you see it? I can. Okay. It looks like it's paused. Um, sorry, guys. One second. If it's okay. paused, it's paused on the slide that has my headshot. Okay. Well, we'll see what happens when I... Uh, it's not in full view. It's, it's in preview time. mode. or Yeah, it's in normal mode. It's not in full. That's what's... Uh, here we go. There we go. Now you see it? <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks, everyone. Sorry about that. Um, so, yes, Jason Smith. Um, you can follow him on Twitter at Jason E. Smith 12. And uh, before I turn things over to Jason, I'd like to introduce our moderator. Today we have Greg Tiber. He is a leader of the Madison CUGC and a CTA. And uh, you can catch him on Twitter at Tiber Greg. Uh, Greg, you want to say hello? Hello, everyone. Thank you. And if you guys would just type your questions into the question panel of the GoToWebinar control panel off to the right, Greg is going to keep an eye on those. Um, if they are relevant during the presentation, he'll um, ask Jason as we go along. Otherwise, some of those that might be able to be saved to the end, he'll hold on to the end. But we'll try to get to all of your questions today. So please type those in for us. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to turn things over to you, Jason, and um, I think we have a poll we want to get you guys started with. Um, first, I'm going to hand the screen over to Jason. There you go. All right. And then whenever you're ready, I can launch the poll. I'm ready. You should see my screen. Whoops. I hit the wrong thing there. Looks like the same icon, but change this last display to the same. There we go. And I can see your control panel. We'll hide that so you can get a few. <laughs> Great. So, so happy to be doing this. Thanks for asking us back, Stephanie and Greg. It's good to be doing this WebEx with you. And today's subject matter is going to be on application layering and user environment management. And it's going to be how uh, really when when you can use the two together designed to work as one. So seamless, as Stephanie pointed out earlier, and uh, we'll cover cover the gamut here and and love the Q and A's. So feel free to uh, to to uh, chime in at any time, and and Greg will help me out there. Sound good, Greg? Sounds very good. Do you want to do the poll right away, or should we save it? To yeah, that's good. So. Let's go ahead and do that poll real quick. We were discussing before the webinar started that uh, we we can see the attentiveness, attentiveness level of the attendees. So love the attention that we'll get today. And you know what? We're going to mix this up and we're going to have a demo like right square in the middle of the presentation. We usually save that for the end, right? So you can uh, work on something else, but it's going to be exciting all the way through. So we want to see if we can uh, you keep everyone's attention throughout the whole thing. So the poll is now open. It is about if you're going to attend Synergy, which is in less than a month away in Anaheim, uh, California. Liquidware will be in booth 401. Stephanie, do you know your booth number for CUGC? We'll actually be over in the community hub in Synergy Park. Oh, nice. So that's where they have all the uh, popcorn and snacks. And sometimes air streams and park benches and hangout places. So that's a nice place to be. <laughs> and here's your results. So it looks like a lot of people aren't going this year, which is a bummer. But we do have some going and some hoping to come. So hopefully you All guys right, great. get there. Well, we'll do a roundup, too, of what Liquidware is doing before the show. And um, you'll be able to see some of our announcements. I believe we're going to make one of our announcements. Oh, you'll get a preview today. So keep that attentiveness level high because I'm going to let the cat out of the bag about what we're announcing. 
So I'm VP of products for Liquidware. You may see my title have marketing on it from time to time, but that's because I'm a technical marketing guy, which tends to be a little bit of a rarity in the industry. And I've been in the industry 20. At some point, I put plus there and, and quit putting the real number because it made me look older. So I've been included uh, and had the blessing of working with several end-user computing companies, including I was a contractor for Citrix at one point, running part of their marketing early in my career. I did a lot of the marketing and launch for Script Logic, and I worked for RES uh, back in uh, 2004 and 5, and I've done some work for Red Hat and, and a few other companies that I don't mention there. But we started Liquidware in 2009, and I joined immediately thereafter. And I was a uh, part, part owner in uh, a company that Liquidware acquired as it got started called Intrigue. And Intrigue was the source for Profile Unity, so user environment management. And it was a very small acquisition, but it gave a mature, somewhat of a mature product for Liquidware to get started day one in conjunction with their monitoring solution, which is known as Stratosphere. We'll recap that in a moment. Love to see you tweet today. I know CUGC would also. So if you're not uh, being attentive today, we hope that you're uh, saying great things on Twitter about us or LinkedIn and some keywords there. Um, CUGC, Profile Unity, and there's a couple of handles that you can refer to, and we'll give you a follow afterwards, after we're done. A little bit more about Liquidware is we have a suite of solutions, and we're the only third party to have a suite of solutions that can control your workspace, environment management, no matter what type of desktop you're doing, virtual, cloud, or physical. So not only do we support Citrix environments for Zen App, Zen Desktop, we also support um, solutions from others like VMware and DAS solutions like Amazon Workspaces and other ones that are emerging in the market very rapidly and we also support physical desktops as well and the key part of that is that you can get your workspace environment under management today and that whatever you're on um, a physical desktop for example and if you plan to go to VDI or you plan to go to DAS or something like that you'll seamlessly be able to have your workspace flow across and that includes that includes opportunities uh, to, to make it, it available as soon as they log on to those environments across the board. So um, the solutions that we have in that stack are user environment management from Profile Unity. Uh, that's our product there, and we'll, we'll spend a bit of time talking about that today. We have FlexApp application layering. So today's presentation is going to be a little bit more centric towards application layering and why you would have user environment management as part of the picture there. Application layering, bringing in apps that aren't in the base image, layering them down. And then um, the optimi it optimizes the way that they're delivered in the environment and works with services and drivers and, and works across OS. We'll recap that again in a moment. And then we add visibility to an environment through our Stratosphere product, Stratosphere UX, user experience. We, knows what, we know what the user experience is today tomorrow and we can help you predict it for the future uh, by helping size those environments appropriately so that's stratosphere and the suites available for one price but we can break those products out individually um, if you've already got a vendor for one or more of those areas so profile unity and flex app do um, come together as one integrated design and that is an exclusive on the market. No one else has designed their application layering as part of user environment management to work from the ground up. You can license them separately, as I stated, and, and it will give you a, the, what happens is you get a license key that enables one or the other, but 90-something percent of the time, prospects will license or organizations will license one complete version there, the, the two products together, because it's not much more to bring in the other part, and you'll see the integrated design today makes things so easy and makes them work seamlessly across the board. So Profile Unity provides the advanced profile that comes in, the policy management. It's a context-aware setting, so it gives you policy management that can work with security settings to lock down USB if you're in a group of users that shouldn't be saving to USB, for example, or, or desktop settings can be hidden to where you have no access to control panels and can't get that access to control panels. Um, it can also deliver applications on a context-aware basis through something like application uh, virtualization through AppV or, or VMware Thin App or through um, our own application layering, which is known as FlexApp, which is the just-in-time delivery of applications. So the profile management really uh, works great across disparate OS environments. So again, th uh, that means 
maybe I've got Zen desktop running on a Windows 7 OS and I've got Zen app running on a server 2016 OS two different versions of Citrix perhaps in a large organization but the user gets one profile works across there and they also get one layered application that was packaged once and will work across almost in all cases both of those operating system environments so that's an over overview of, of what the products can do for you uh, and we'll do a click down now to look at this from an app layering centric point of view quick reality check Greg we have any questions that have come in uh, we just had one come in Jason can this support Windows 10 store apps a great question so the uh, I believe in Windows 10 the current time we recommend you turn store off and the app layering solutions on the market actually do recommend you uh, turn the store off um, for app layering rights but yes for our profile management if you plan to use our profile management we can help make certain things portable across those experiences now a lot of the store apps have um, embedded settings in them that already save up to the cloud for the settings in those store apps so the value proposition for store apps might not be as much but as you know most enterprises the, pro, the true productivity apps are the ones that we focus on for enterprises the ones that are centric to those organizations that you know run those organizations and those aren't not offered up as store so a mix of an answer there All right, thanks for that question. And again, we'd love them when they come in. Uh, feel free to tweet at any time about anything you're seeing today. Application layering overview. Our Flex app application layering, all right? And I'm not going to get into a tit for tat about how it's different than Citrix app layering, which is a good solution, but you'll want to know that there's differences in here. Just listen closely and bring the slide to the forefront of what you're doing today because you want to see these bullet points and be very attentive <laughs> in here that no uh, that I'll point these things out along the way is what I'm getting at that you'll hear me saying some things that differentiate us from Citrix app layering and possibly even other solutions on the market like app volumes so flex app layering it's not application isolation it's great for apps that can't be isolated so that's where we're a little different than Microsoft app B or thin app where you might need things isolated application virtualization we work uh, as if we're native in the environment itself. So applications that um, have drivers and services and need to interact with other applications work very well through this technology. The OS itself thinks that the application is installed when it's actually layered into the environment from a VHD. You can also use VMDK. Um, we suggest you start with VHD because you they're far more flexible and there's less infrastructure required. We have a very high degree of compatibility across a lot of different applications with app layering compared to app virtualization, for example. One of the big points of our differentiation here is that we're not tied to the OS that you package an app for. And we're seeing some of the other solutions on the market uh, testing this type of thing in beta, but we've done this for a long time. An application, once packaged with FlexApp, will work across OS environments, as I stated earlier, the example from Windows 7 to Server 2016, in almost all cases, that app will come in seamlessly. You don't have to repackage them. Um, we focus on application layering, not the OS layering. So another differentiation there. Um, we believe that image management is, for the OS itself, is left best to Citrix provisioning server and proven solutions that have worked for most organizations over time. The Flex app supports, as I stated earlier, any type of Windows desktop, such as virtual desktops, VDI, RDS, we're already testing, you may have heard of RDMI from Microsoft, as they talked about it last year at Microsoft Ignite, we're already testing and uh, making sure that we'll work well with that. And with well-managed physical desktops as well, another differentiation is that FlexApp will work with well-managed physical desktops. That means you've recently had a desktop refresh. They're not encumbered by a lot of application installs, uninstalls. They're relatively clean. FlexApp works very well to bring in applications in those environments. The applications that FlexApp handles, uh, we, we really are known to be fast to package. Uh, to, to package an app, it takes about the same amount of time as it does to install the app. You don't need someone that's really schooled in application packaging to manage Flex app. 
they're easy to deploy. You'll see that today, and they work across OS versions, um, which is perfect for mixed Zen app and Zen desktop environments, as I stated earlier. So Jason, a quick question. You support PVS, do you support MCS? We do. So it doesn't matter what you're using to um, provision your machines or how you manage your base images. We seamlessly will bring in the applications after that, you know, uh, when the user logs on most times, at boot time log on, or our click to layer on demand applications. And then another question. Um, is this solution easier to implement than Citrix app layering? I don't want to specifically speak for them, but from what I've seen um, where we do Excel among, let's just say solutions in the industry, <laughs> is that our, we're very fast to package. So I pointed that out earlier. It's Take Notepad, for example. We package Notepad up and, and, let, and provision it out in less than five minutes. I'm going to show that here in a second. I said I'd mix in some demos. Um, with other solutions, it might take up to no, no. There's no joke here, or, or no exaggeration. 30 minutes to package something, and then it's only for one OS, oftentimes, and then it it takes a little longer to push out. Um, the package once is the other thing. Is that we work with you know. We work across OS environments. So there's a couple of differences in there. And, and we're not packaging up the OS itself. If you prefer OS layering approach, you know, and, and, and to forego some of those benefits of, of provisioning server, um, you, you, you might want to give it a look because we don't do OS layering. And we our best practice is to use your OS layering solutions that are, are I'm sorry, OS provisioning solutions that are proven, such as provisioning server, MCS, and then allow application layering to be true application layering. So it's just some differences in methodology there. I wouldn't say it's better or worse or to pick on them at all because, uh, you know, the, the Unidesk for a while, they led in, in technology and uh, they were well known for a reason. And then uh, a few more questions before you, before you move on. Um, what is the maximum number of app layers that you can have per machine? Oh, great question. Um, Technically, the limit there is that we can have, um, I think it's over 200. It's how many attachments you can have uh, of VHDs, and there's a, there's a technical limit in there for Microsoft. Performance-wise, we recommend you try to keep it around 20, or we've, we've even got clients that are, are attaching 24, 25. We could still keep going, but at some point when you do those mounts, and they don't show up as drive mappings, by the way. They do show up under disk management. It's, they start to impact log on a bit. There's ways around that, though, and we have our, we have our click to layer technology that I've mentioned earlier, and that click to layer technology will bring in apps on demand. Okay. Turn down the volume uh, on this video. Sorry. Do you hear the volume? I cannot, no. Oh, you didn't hear the volume. There's a, there's a voiceover in this. Yeah, so if you're not hearing that, I won't worry about it. But this is the demonstration I wanted to uh, show. Actually, it's not the demonstration I want to show. Um, I'll revisit that in a moment. Okay, I have a I'll couple more questions for you. Go on and I'll look over while you're saying the questions. Okay. How are login times for big application layers compared to the same amount of applications in Citrix app layering? Oh, that's a good question. Um, really, no matter how big the application is, we mount it in the same time. So a notepad will mount as fast as Epic. And by the way, Epic doesn't endorse application layering from any vendor, but we've done it. Um, Epic's very, very large, but it mounts in the same amount of time. What does the trick there is the file system filter drivers in the uh, OS that, that, that Flex Apps is, is bringing in, and, and that's when they start doing their interpretation. So they mount just as quick, because what you're doing is you're mounting a VHD from block level storage. Okay, and then um, does Flex app, app have the ability to elastically assign applications based on security groups or another method of deploying to only certain people? Yeah, that's a great question too. And instead of showing the uh, recorded demo, I'm gonna switch over to my um, lab environment and I'll give you that type of demo in here. So 
So how can we assign these applications? So um, what you can do is once you're in uh, Flex app here, we'll see the applications that have been packaged in an environment. And when you assign them, you're basically doing this right here. If you've packaged them with an application packager, as soon as that happens, um, they show up here because we're speaking to the console. And I've got just some open source stuff in here, but I did mention this one, so I'll drag this one over here. You want to assign these two applications to a group? We use our context or we're filters. So I'm answering two things and showing a demo at the same time here of uh, the earlier thing. Once you package, how do you how do you uh, deploy? Um, you can have any context aware setting in here, and this is where we have a filter that goes beyond. So I've got one in here uh, for the accounting department, and I can tell you how I assign that. It was by an AD group that was already called accounting. So if I wanted those two packages for some reason to go to accounting, it was there. I hit save, and then I deploy the configuration, and the next person to log on, once that configuration's been deployed, they will get those applications. So we can get very granular with filters. And filters can be built around anything uh, that you can think of. You go over here to filter management, and we'll go over here to one that I showed you accounting. Now I'll show you one that's not accounting. Um, so if you wanted to, to go to everyone except accounting, you could come over here and you could build out. And here's the criteria, and this is the, the heart of the question of what that was just asked. What can we apply to? And by the way, if you're not being attentive today, you might want to see this demo. So flip to the front here and give us a look. <laughs> I'm determined to get our attentive numbers up for liquidware today for average WebExes. But if you look under here, what you would do is you'd say the machine, I mean the, the group of users, and you would apply that and it, it would immediately let you browse that group. But there's other criteria in here, and that would be like by an IP address range, for example. Um, anything you can think of, I can just about guarantee we've added to the product over time. That could be IP address, it could be MAC address, it could get very, very granular. You can combine one or more things, so you hit add and you add this to the list, so it's it's uh, it, it becomes an add, an either or, or also is, and we'll bring this into the environment uh, as, as a context aware filter that you saw me choose. So once you build a filter out here, they show up in that list, and look here, you can also have OS um, versions that you apply this to or if you want to apply it, uh, or when you want to apply it. So that's a look at our filters. And they're, like I said, they're over here. It's one of the most powerful things about Flex app is that you can apply this to a context-aware setting. Now, let me talk about today's webinar, because filters, they apply to anything within our user environment management. So that filter that I built out, you could apply that same filter to a registry key. So what if you packaged up something and you had a registry key you wanted to roll out with it? You could add a registry key to that same filter group. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. And that's your peppered in demo. And we'll flip back and forth today. And a couple more questions. Will this work for both Zen Server and vCenter? Zen Server, yes. It's uh, We're independent of the um, of the uh, hypervisor bringing in the uh, the environment for vCenter, um, we yes we work seamlessly with vCenter, but we also support VMDKs. You mentioned I've mentioned VHDs today, but we can package onto VMDKs. And by the way, another um, point about us is that you can mix and match if you want to VHDs and VMDKs for your package containers. So another exclusive there for for us that we seamlessly deliver. You don't have to choose either or. We do both. Okay, and then a question that got my interest is, um, how successful are you with layering SQL Express dependent apps? SQL Express dependent apps. So if you're layering down SQL with that. Yep. We uh, have, have been known to work well with um, apps that require SQL. We can layer in SQL if you wish, or you could put that in your base image. Um, now, what they might be also after is, do I need to package those up at the same time? Same time, does SQL Express need to be packaged with my app that requires SQL Express. And the answer there is almost certainly no, um, because the way that we treat our application layers, um, they they can be packaged independently of each other through a technology that we developed called micro isolation. That packages don't necessarily have to be aware of each other to work well together. If there are conflicts, 
are if they're requirements that they're needed they'll seamlessly go there in the OS but if they're conflicts more importantly they'll head off those conflicts and they'll um, copy a DLL for example if there's a conflict and they'll reach back to get the uh, DLL from the VHD or VMDK where they was originally packaged and then I think this might have been answered earlier but when does the amount of app layers affect login times Yep, somewhere around 20, you would notice. Um, here's the thing about app layers, though, is you can take one app layer and you could package one app on it, and we, we, we suggest you start with that. One application per VHD, for example, or VMDK. Um, and that way, when you update an application, you're only taking down one application, you're updating it and you're putting it back out, or you could delete that whole application and rebuild it from scratch. If you're not updating, you're replacing it. So it's easier to manage applications when they're in their separate VHDs or VMDKs, but you can also put multiple applications on a VHD or VMDK. So you can open that VHD right back up and you can put another application on it. So you can minimize that that way, or even better is our click to layer technology that no one else has, and that's this. It's applications on demand. So we can roll out an application at logon, okay? That means when the user logs on, those app players are mounted, and that's what the, today's question, that question was about. But we can bring in applications on demand, only put the icons on the desktop. We don't mount the whole application. So therefore, you could put 100 applications on a desktop, for example, and have almost no impact. And only when the user clicks on the application is it then mounted and then played back. So it has n almost no impact at logon in that regard. And the way that works on a... Uh, Zen app machine for RDS is that the first user in that environment on that server would that use that app it would mount and then it would be available for all other users instantaneously so click to layer and apps on demand um, is a big, big big win for Citrix environments Jason it looks like you're still in preview mode on in PowerPoint there yeah thanks for pointing that out we'll get back to the next subject matter and then so I, our, yeah. I assume just one question. You're, mm -hmm. you, in your demo, you were demoing, I believe it was 6.5. Is that the current version of? Uh, it's 6.7.5 I was demoing in the, in the okay. um, and that's a uh, beta version. Okay. Um, actually, 6.7.5 just shipped last week, but we didn't publicly announce it because we've got uh, one that's chock full of even more features we're going to announce just before Synergy, and I'll get to what that announcement is in a moment. Good, good point though. Good eye. Um, so problem solved for Citrix environments um, include um, why people choose to use us together, um, FlexApp and Profile Unity. Profile Unity will basically avoid a user migration. So when you upgrade your your back your back office environment for Zen App or Zen Desktop, you upgrade the OS and you upgrade the Citrix version. Users can seamlessly log on. You can't do that with Citrix UPM, by the way. It doesn't go well across OS versions. A couple of things might stick, but it doesn't bring the entire profile across. Nor does it allow you to go backwards and forwards, which we do, or to coexist. So to be able to layer an app across multiple OS environments, I've mentioned more than once today, but the simplified app packaging, how fast we package apps and how fast we deploy them is another win for why we uh, customers will use the two products together from us, Profile Unity with Flex App. Um, the large profile caching, uh, we handle Office 365 caches seamlessly because we have a profile disk technology that we use uh, in those use cases. And we can mount that um, from a block level at, right up front. It mounts very fast no matter how large the profile is and you're seamlessly off and running. It, it basically makes all the Office 365 cache stick or large profiles in general. So if you have another app that's causing a large profile, we can implement a profile disk from us that will speed up those environments. The um, click to layer, I've mentioned more than once again, that was another exclusive. The application rights management, and I'll get to that and recap on a slide in a moment, but that's a big, huge win and plus for choosing us uh, together, Profile Unity with Flex App. Um, the context to where you saw in the filter management, the ongoing management of the desktop itself through all the Profile Unity features you saw, and then you've got this one central management console that you continue to see in the demo. Any other questions coming in? Yeah, there's a couple here. Um, does this work with Nutanix? Um, 
I assume the answer is yes. Yeah, yeah. So it works cool. with any Windows. So once you know the underlying infrastructure is up and running, the Windows is on it. Uh, Profile Union Flex App have no problems running across uh, a Nutanix hypervisor, even uh, Nutanix storage either. So. Yes. And then another question: What is meant by no application isolation? Um, if we can compare uh, Flex App or App Layering in general to uh, as a category, app layering in general, Citrix app layering, app volumes, flex app from Liquidware that we're talking about today. We have filter drivers that trick the OS into thinking the app is there. When you go looking for where the app is installed, if you open up File Manager, you'll see um, all the binaries where they're supposed to be. If they're in the system folder, they're in the system folder. If they're in the program uh, files folder, they're in the program files folder. They are in the OS where they are in the OS. The filter driver makes them look like they're there. They're actually in a VHD or VMDK. Now, compare that to thin app. Thin app from VMware is application virtualization. It does provide isolation, okay? And, and Microsoft App V does as well. Apps are containerized and they're sort of in a bubble. The OS doesn't necessarily interact with them fully. They're not installed exactly where they're supposed to be in the Windows OS, according to the vendor. That, that, that's some pluses. Them. Some pluses for them is that you can run um, two versions of Internet Explorer within App, for example, um, an old version and a new version, and they'll run side by side. That's because they're isolated from the OS bits themselves, and the OS doesn't know that maybe the second Internet Explorer is in there, being brought in through Thin App. Application layering generally doesn't do that. It doesn't fully isolate it where the OS doesn't see it. It lets the OS see everything it's doing. So that's no isolation compared to full, almost full isolation with Thin App. And they can open up Thin App, open up their bubble, and to let it interact with other apps. So then with no isolation, you, apps work well together. Say, um, Bonjour from Apple. Uh, iTunes needs that to run. And if uh, Bonjour is brought in separately from iTunes um, and they're both layered in, they're going to work well together through most app, uh, you know, through a Flex app application layering at least. And, uh, so, but that wouldn't be the case if you isolated Bonjour from, from uh, iTunes with application isolation. So applications that need to interact well together, you know, Adobe's got a bunch of those. Um, they, work very well with application layer. And then uh, a couple more questions. Uh, are you supporting user data layering with ZenApp? Um, currently Citrix app layering, Unidesk does not. Yeah, the way we handle that is um, through our profile disk. And I don't want to speak for them, but I believe it might be a beta product for them and it has been beta for the last several versions their labs portion, but okay. it's, I checked their release notes the other day. Um, we do that through our profile disk, which we really innovated and we've had it since 2014. And that's how we bring in the Office 365 I spoke about earlier, um, cash. Uh, we're experts in profile management, have been for a very long time, going back to 2008 when we started doing, pro, or 2007 when we started doing profiles, even before Liquidware. Um, and, we've we provide it through through those means we even have some methods to let you install your own applications especially for um, Windows 7 environments and, and for selective Windows 10 environments so we can even keep track of those but surely for the uh, user layer itself we do a, a great job with our profile disk technology so the answer is yes and then I guess there's a follow-up to the um, uh, uh, lost the question here to the application isolation question is that not available um, the question here is some situations require it in their environment is that not available yeah is application isolation not available with liquidware to completely isolate an application from the rest of the right we don't we, we, we don't generally um, isolate at all we provide micro isolation, which is like the DLL con, um, conflict resolution I spoke of earlier. If we see a conflict, it's really isolation only for conflicts. Um, multiple versions of Java, if that's what they're after, we have a method that uh, we proved will work well in environments the other day. You do need our system engineer to be able to uh, implement that in your environment, but we can do that 
but uh, for the use case like I spoke about about Internet Explorer, um, no. And that that would be the same for different versions of Office. You could run the same way as well. Right. You wouldn't you wouldn't be able to isolate multiple versions of Office to uh, okay. and, and to work on one single machine. No. Okay. And then a question: How are multiple logins by the same user handled? If they log in at their primary machine and then log into a conference room, um, will everything go to both places? Yes. Yes. Even the indexing will follow in the. Uh, for Microsoft, even if you're using our profile disk, this is there's some things we worked on lately to make sure uh, in our profile disk that uh, even our indexing will follow the user um, across. So simultaneous, multiple logins or are, are are different logins are handled different than simultaneous logins. With simultaneous logins, you could set up our our profile portability. We have two profile technologies. Profile portability always works with simultaneous logins and has fast performance, by the way. When we go to the larger profiles and implement a profile disk in addition to that, so profile disk would run first uh, in those cases and bring in the large profile and then bring in secondarily the uh, other bits. You can have simultaneous logins still in those environments because we can have more than one profile disk per machine. We work well with ZenApp with this technology too. Um, well, we treat our the search indexing that follows the user a little bit different. Um, it's tied to the machine. Uh, so the server that they've logged into, but the performance is of such that it it's not noticeable that the um, indexing is per server in that case for Zenit. Okay, that's all the questions for now. I'll let you get caught up with the presentation. All right. I was going to show a demo there, but uh, I've already shown most of that demo. The application rights management is another great thing that you'll find in us that you won't find integrated with other vendors. And that is in as part of Profile Unity and as part of layering, occasionally you know, as part of Windows and part of layering, you sometimes need an application to run with elevated privileges. And the bad, the bad practice, we always talk about best practices in the industry, but the bad practice in the industry is to make all users a an administrator of their machine uh, to get around this. However, that opens up security problems and issues. Um, well, Profile Unity can elevate privileges for a specific named application. Um, we get around the fact that you can't rename those even, and we can do that by SHA-1 hash and of the application, which ensures it's the only application being elevated and not a child process or something like that. So we can raise the privileges for a user to run one application. This is integrated in our solution to be able to do this with no extra fee. So another reason that you would want to use UEM and layering together from us. We can also do whitelist and blacklist of applications too. And where that comes in handy is if you want to layer um, a lot of applications to uh, a ZenApp server, but you don't want everyone to have access to them, you can blacklist certain groups using those context aware filters that I mentioned earlier. So all that's included, what we call application rights management between elevation, privilege elevation, and application rights management. I could show you where that is in the uh, OS. I promise to pepper in the demo. Privilege elevation is over here. Um, again, what you would do is just re 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 log in here again. That's where you name the application, or you can um, deem the SHA-1 hash of an application to raise the privileges for a sp specific user. So in this case, you would want to uh, apply it to a group, whatever that context-aware filter is again, maybe the accounting department, just an example there. And then you would say, what do you want to do? You want to raise the privileges for the user to either install an application or to run an application, which is the more common use case. In, organizations and to allow it and then to uh, if the match contains and you'd put in you know if the match contains which would be the path in this case if we put in QuickBooks here now if the executable uh, or even the path where that is that would raise the privileges for QuickBooks for that user once we applied it and updated so that's the way it elevates the privileges and the other thing is that the more secure way to do that would be the SHA-1 uh, hash of the application 
and then you put in the SHA-1 hash of what the vendor application is, and only that application could be integrated in there, uh, I mean elevated for the user. The companion part that goes along with that is our application restrictions. So this is if you wanted to put in, uh, usually the, the most common use case again here is that if you wanted to layer down or if you wanted to install in the base image even, because it doesn't matter if it's a layered application or native installed application, um, our application restrictions will work. And you say, you know, if the group is uh, not accounting, I think is one of the, is not accounting, then don't let them run, deny, and here's another use case, the path contains QuickBooks. That'd be the other way to do that, put QuickBooks in your base image. Uh, just an example, there's other ways to deliver that, obviously with Flex app on context aware, but that would be the example there. All this is included in Profile Unity. Leave your users standard users and elevate privileges as needed, or um, you can also restrict applications from running. You can tie those back to an AD group as well, so you can only enable applications if they're in an AD group. So another great way to manage things and why UEM and that layering go very, very well together. So another couple of questions, Jason. Um, when packaging applications, will Liquidware allow you to play a dependent layer into it and have it stay and then record the application that required it? When packaging applications, you can basically essentially open up the layer where you originally package the, what you want to package together and play back, yes, play back. On the on the packaging console, and and then append to that package itself, or put it in another layer. So, good question. Okay, but, and then yeah. the other question: How many agents, clients will I need to install onto my base to get app layering, profile management, and and app elevation? Yep, Not good sure. question. So, the 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 main heart of our solution is uh, one agent. And just a couple of uh, there's a few dry, there's a few services that run, um, and so it's the profile Unity executable, and that agent is I think last time I checked less than six megabytes in size. That's tiny, small, six megabytes in size for our main agent. And then there's some services that run. There's two filter drivers for FlexApp to run, for example, and that is one's for the file system to bring in that application when you're layering, and the other one is for the registry. It brings that in, so it's a pair of filter drivers that run. And then the elevation service has yet another service that would run, but uh, it's very quick to do. You can even, if, if you don't have it in your base image, it's collectively less than 20 megabytes of files that can be cached down at Logon for your proof of concept, and a lot of people use that. You don't even have to put it in your base image. It's cached down at Logon, given that a group policy rings true, brings down those files, and then you're off and running to the races to test your POC. Once you go into production, we do recommend you put it in your base image. That way it's not caching down that 20 megabytes every time to get up and running. Okay, and then another question. Could you put Office 365 click to run in an app layer and deploy that? Yes. Yep, and what you do, um, to do that, let's see if I can remember. See this right here? Um, if I don't click, enable click to layer, which I am right there. Uh, that's how that works, by the way. So. Um, that's the difference in giving the full app to the user at logon, or when you click that, only putting a, sh a shortcut to this app on the desktop, and then it's mounted when they log on, after log on. So click to layer another exclusive from us, as I mentioned earlier, but you can do that even with uh, Office 365. Now, let me make a point about Office Suites. We recommend, we can do them, and we've got documentation on the nuances, because they're large, of, of, of packaging those up. You get into, you know, licensing things with making sure your KMS server is out there and, and all that stuff in the enterprise. The easiest thing to do is put your office suites in your base. We can do it, and, and we'll gladly show you how. Is it easier to put in your base? Yeah, because, I'm, like, what, 100% of the people need office in your environment? So um, you can get... 
and run smoother and interact with licensing a lot smoother than trying to layer in um, Office Suite. And one more question. Um, do you have a storage solution types and sizing recommendations for the VHD storage of the profile layers? It really yeah. just depends so, based on the size, correct? It, it does, but you, you can use something like our Stratosphere solution to go out there and see how big your uh, average profiles are to get an idea of what that is. But when you're implementing our profile disk solution, the uh, it's over here in the product. And here's the cool thing about when you implement this. It runs before even our agent runs. So it, it that's when it provisions the VHD and lays it down, giving a little XML file it's reading on the network to, to do this for users. And here we specified five gigabytes in size. That does not mean it's going to be five gigabytes in size to start. It starts small and then grows because we've got it marked as expandable. So a safe thing would be to do this market, say, for five or ten gigabytes and say it's expandable. Then I can't remember which small size it starts at, but it's not five gigabytes. I think it's like one or less, and, and then we'll grow as needed. That gets around part of the uh, guesswork or, 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 or actually enables you to have guesswork on how big your profiles need to be. Great question. Any others? Uh, one just came in. What about Hacienda storage performance, IOPS, et cetera? How much that uh, the impact of it? Uh, we can actually uh, look at some of that with our uh, Stratosphere solution. But what we're seeing is with uh, the applications themselves, they're going to ring. The, all the processing is done locally. Um, locally means you know it's going to be on the server if you're in BDI or on Zenapp server, right? But your IOPS are going to remain uh, similar for read-write for the application execution itself, how many times it's pinging and, and, and grabbing the IOPS, but it's subjective depending on your environment and also depending on uh, the performance of your storage, how, how many IOPS you can tolerate in an environment. So that was a non-answer on that, but it varies. All caught up then on questions. Okay, great. Our registry file and edits are a cool thing I touched on earlier, but it's another reason why layering an application, uh, layer um, user environment management go very well together. In this case, with Profile Unity, um, Profile Unity, everything it run, it does, it runs with admin privileges. This is not the case for a simple profile tool, and that gives us powerful things. We've developed our run with admin privileges a long time ago, and it's been a huge um, plus in the industry for us. To show you what that means is that now I can go into a configuration in Profile Unity, and if I want to add a registry key, like I said earlier, now if you want to tie that back to the same group you layered an application down, that's great, but you can, You can, here's what you can do to add a registry rule. You can merge, exclude, or replace any kind of registry um, key in the environment. And so if you know what those values are, you put them here so you can add, delete um, the key, or basically you're appending to it as well. And then you can do it all the way to a, look at this. Here's where the big difference is, H key local machine. And that gives us more powerful things than you might find in a, other UEM solutions in the market. Certainly no profile solutions tools that just do profiles do this type of thing. H key local machine, why is that important? It's because when you lay things and can go all the way to that level, because you're running with admin privileges to get to that level, not in the user context, which is then you're only enabled to do whatever that same user can do. We're doing things as an admin, and we, if we lay down disable USB for a machine, for example, for a standard user, we've just locked down USB. Um, that's just an example of the power of that. And you can also, you know, do any kind of registry tweaks that help an application run better in here too. So you can do registry tweaks in two areas. You can append your packaging at the time of packaging, or after the fact, you can bring in a registry setting or key to, to put in standards in your organization for a certain application, for example. And again, 
these are laid down by context aware filter and setting just like everything is in here and that's the other huge advantage if you lay if, if I layered down you know application X in the environment by a context aware filter I can also append to it with a registry key by the same context aware filter so big 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 benefits to having the solutions run together because we run with admin privileges and we can do things like grab registry keys I already showed you the packaging console. One thing I want to remind you about Profile Unity is that we go across OS versions, and at this time of Windows 10 having three or four different profile versions themselves, this has become not less important than ever, but more important than ever because these incremental changes that Windows is pushing out, Microsoft Windows is pushing out automatically every six months, and you've probably got this turned off in a server environment, but um, when you do roll those out, more often times than not, the profile is again broken to a whole nother profile version. Profile Unity fixes all that. Every time we look at the OS, we lay down the OS according to the version and where it needs to be in the OS. And the majority of the profile, um, we keep consistent across those two environments. Rarely, there are areas, files that didn't exist in those others, and we even keep those separate. So we make the profile work where it can work across OS, and where it doesn't work, we will um, keep another hive just for that OS itself. All the way from Windows, we don't really support XP anymore. I guess we do have a couple of clients might still be on it, but Windows 7 and forward. The um, architecture required to run Profile Unity is that's going to turn that back on is what I'd like to go over now is that you already have everything you need to run profile unity and flex app in your organization we mentioned storage today yes you want to make sure you have enough storage but other than that you've got the requirements in place you don't have to procure SQL servers you don't have to have dedicated servers even the profile unity management console which you've seen me demo over and over again today that runs on a Windows server does not have to be dedicated okay if you leave it on and up and running it will get log files if it goes offline profile unity will still run for the end user PCs that's because the INI file instruction set that that small agent I discussed earlier looks to a file share that's replicated across the environment that's read only across the environment that's scaled across the environment therefore we recommend the net log on file share recommend it it's not a requirement so already scaled and has the parameters we need to put the agent files, the INI file out there. Again, the agent file gets cached down in proof of concepts. More than often than not, it's built into the image when you go production. Uh, again, we use a file share for user profiles to be saved back, and also for the user, um, the user profile VHD would be saved out to the user's existing home drive, for example. Um, profile, I mean, Flex apps, I'm sorry, uh, would go on to your uh, your NAS or any other storage that are out there. The faster storage, the better. The, the storage that can handle more ops, IOPS, the better. So flash arrays are perfect. Um, uh, SSDs are, are great. Um, even fast spinning disks work well as well, but the faster the better, as I stated earlier. And those are VHDs, those are provisioned out there at package time. There's no templates to install. It's all it's all a point to where the path is. We provision the VHD automatically and we immediately start packaging. And then we make the console, as you saw today, automatically aware that the application exists. Okay, so any Windows machine is supported from Windows 7 and forward. I'm gonna talk about how this works in the cloud environment in a minute. So we'll be at uh, Synergy, going back to the poll we started earlier, um, and we'll be in booth number 401, and that's going to be front and center. That's a picture of the Anaheim Convention Center. Hopefully you're going. If you're not, we'll have a recap um, shortly after Synergy and blogs about what we announced there. But we'll be introducing, and you're getting this news a few weeks earlier, object-based storage for user profiles. Uh, that means Amazon Workspaces, Google Cloud, uh, Azure Blob, all three are supported. So when the user logs off, profile can be stored directly out to object-based storage. So um, we can also do user-authored data in that regard. Let me show you how that works. So I'm going ahead and sharing you some news that we'll be talking about in the coming weeks. Press release not even out yet. Um, the part that we're already shipping here that we haven't even announced, but if you go download the product 
it's out there today. Amazon um, S3 is already supported in this way. Google Cloud and Azure will be supported when we announce everything together in a couple of weeks. Uh, so here's the way it works. Same architecture I just went through, but I've updated a few things here. And, and that is that your, uh, if you wanted to push this as far as you wanted to to the cloud, that's what this shows here, is that our server that runs the uh, management console could be running on a cloud hosted server. That's already true today. But your net log on files that I mentioned earlier could be, doesn't they don't even have to go on an SMB or SIS drive. You can put them on S3 or any object based storage like I'm pointing to here. That's your agent, your INI file, things like that. Your FlexApp VHDs would still remain in actually, uh, I'm sorry, your profile disk would remain in a um, in, in an SMB SIF share today. That's a requirement uh, that we um, can't get around yet. So um, your FlexApp VHDs would also remain on an SMB type SIF drive today. Um, your user profiles, though, are can be saved at logon with our portability engine, uh, that, and that's what makes us go across OS, and that's what gives us that granular capabilities to S3 and object-based storage, and that's that's what the uh, the news is about there. The um, folder redirection for my documents, my pictures, and things like that, what we call user authored data, we can save directly out to any of the enterprise type solutions on the market today that you see there. So we'll be announcing that uh, because we will have just shipped it by the time that uh, Synergy rolls around. And there are no other vendors in this space that support profiles storage in the cloud. Uh, natively, and by that I mean directly saving to object-based storage. You may have seen where some might have claimed to do this, uh, but they did it the way that we already did it, through an SMB that's in the cloud, um, server message block, uh, not small, medium business, <laughs> server message block, sys drive in the cloud. We're getting around that to where you don't even have to have a Windows machine for a file share. And that's the unique and the, uh, and the special thing that we're doing and, and we'll be announcing here shortly at, at uh, Synergy. And just a housekeeping, uh, Jason, we're almost out of time. All right. I'm ready to take uh, final questions. And if there aren't any, we can pass it back over to Stephanie soon. Um, the last question I have is, can you show an example of generating a layer, as you announced earlier in the webinar? Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. Let, let me see if I can find that, uh, Stephanie, while you um, take care of uh, your points. Is that, will that work? Sure. Yeah, I'll just grab the screen back. Yeah, right grab the screen you. and I'll see if I can find it because I meant, mentioned that would have it up. All right. So for those of you who are heading to Synergy, we would love to see you. I'm going to put uh, a link, another link. I've been putting some things in the chat window for you, but I'm going to put one more. It's a link to our CUGC at Synergy page. And that's where you can register for our pregame party. It's really fun and we have limited space. So if you are going to Synergy, please go ahead and sign up to get on the list for that. Um, it's also a place where you can catch up with everything we're planning for Synergy. There are links to blog posts. We have lots of blog posts coming out about different elements of Synergy, people's favorite sessions, CUGC members presenting at Synergy. So lots of great stuff out there. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, we will have a booth in the community hub in Synergy Park. So we'd love to have you stop by. That's where you can pick up your limited edition 2018 CUGC t-shirt. And um, right. that, do you, are you ready, Jason? Yeah, I, can come yeah, I found it. Okay. I found it. So I will send this back Thanks. to you. Hold on one second. Okay, coming your way. Right, so one of the easiest apps in the world is Notepad. I'm not showing that because it's simple for us. It just sets the bar low if you want to compare it to other solutions on the market. Just want to verify, Greg, you're seeing my screen, right? Again? Yes, I see. Yep. Yes. All right, so uh, obviously it's easier for me to talk to this video, but what we just did is logged into the FlexApp packaging console, which runs on a non-persistent machine. 
And in this case, just VMware Workstation is what I've used, where I can reset it and keep the machine clean. Um, and I selected Package Up an App, and it gives me a short screen to fill out and just browse to the installer. So Notepad is what I'm going to choose here. And now, where do I want to? Do I want this as a VHD or a VMDK? And I chose VHD, as I said, it's more flexible. Where's the VHD location? And that's going to be your path to where you're going to save that. Now, as soon as I did that and click Go, it's um, provisioning the VHD. There's no cumbersome templates to implement like you may have seen some other solutions in the market. It does all that automatically. And then Notepad immediately kicks in and it starts installing. And this is where I was saying, you don't have to be specially trained to be an application packager for FlexApp. It's a matter of making sure that the right radio buttons have been selected throughout how you want the default configuration of that application to work. And so um, in that regard, it's just like installing anything else. So now that we have clicked what we wanted and hit install, just like that, we've installed and we've layered. You saw it hit the application. You saw it hit the desktop and the uh, we click run. So we've already tested it and we've hit finish. And what finish does is it basically seals the VHD. It tells the it tells the the, the profile unity console hey flex apps available and you saw me demonstrate that earlier but it's communicating that right now and then here in the flex app package i've got two copies of notepad because i had one previously set up so maybe i updated this and just like that i have the updated version of notepad but i could have opened up the old one and appended to it now i switch back over to the flex uh, to the management console you saw this earlier but we're going to recap and show you again and now i've opened this up and I've got the new version of Notepad immediately in here. It was immediately made aware, and I can provision it out just like that. So there's the old version, there's the new version. I'm going to take the old version away. So then, and then when I push this out, what happens is the next time that machine's rebooted um, or logged onto, the old version will go away because it's still sitting on the on the on the SMB, and then the new version will come in. And that's how quickly you provision an app. And that's how we can do it in less than five minutes. And it may take up to 30 minutes with uh, competing solutions on the market. Did that cause any further last questions, Greg? I don't believe so, but let me check. Um, I did. So what about application prerequisites? Are they stored in the VHD or must they be installed in the OS? And then the other question is, do you have a distributor in Israel? We've got a distri I'll answer that one first. We've got a distributor in the Middle East. I'm not sure about Israel. I'll be glad to follow up with you on that. And you can uh, email me at uh, anybody on the WebEx can email me at jason.smith at liquidware.com. We'll follow up with you. Um, the prerequisites for an application to get back to that question. Uh, if they're small prerequisites, you might want to package them in there. If they're system prerequisites like .NET and things like that and needs a specific version of this or that, you want to make sure it's either um, in another package or in that package. It's up to you. Our micro isolation makes those types of decisions easy because if they're packaged together, they work well together. If they're not packaged together, our micro isolation usually takes care of the fact that they weren't packaged together and, and sorts out any kind of differences between their packaging. Um, because they look native to the OS, they're going to appear to the OS as native. And you can also reorder um, which order the applications come in. So if you want prerequisites to come in first, if you package them separate, those will mount first. Or you can have them come in at boot time even. Uh, there's a way to do that um, before, before and at login time. So. There's a few ways around that, but it's no challenge for us. And then one last question. How would add-ins work for a program, Outlook or AutoCAD? You could uh, package them in if they run in the uh, in the application space. Certain applications for different, certain applications that have add-ins run in the user space and they save to the user profile, okay? So browsers are that way to a large degree. Um, in that case, if it were like a browser add-in and stuff like that, then they would be picked up and kept in the user profile, and Profile Unity would natively handle that even without layering. But if they're in the application space, uh, well, they would likely need to be packaged up with the application. All right, that's it for questions. Great. Well, 
thank you, Stephanie, for having me on again today. And nice to meet you, Greg. Nice to do this WebEx with you, or go to meeting, I should say. <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming back, Jason. It's always great to have you on. And thanks, Greg, for uh, keeping an eye on those questions. I know there are probably a couple of questions that we may not have gotten to. Um, I will get those over to Jason after the webinar is done. We'll post them in the forum as soon as we get the answers. And I'll also go ahead and include a transcript of today's Q&A in the forum thread as well. And that link is in the chat window. Uh, for those of you who opted in to possibly win an Amazon Echo, um, keep your eyes on Twitter. Follow us at MyCUGC and uh, check in on the website. And we will announce the winner on Twitter and in that forum thread. And finally, there is a survey link in the chat window as well. We'd love to get your feedback on today's presentation and get your thoughts on content for future webinars. Um, that's always helpful to us. And with that, thanks again, Jason. That was really great. I loved all the questions that came in. So obviously, you were, you were speaking, uh, hitting home there to some people. Um, so thanks for that. And thanks, thanks again, Greg. Um, hope you guys all have a great day. Bye. Thanks. Bye.